Hallelujah. Father, we, we bless you right now, Lord God. We we give you praise. We honor you. We thank you right now, Lord God. We can't go any further without, first of all, acknowledging that your grace is amazing. We are at your mercy right now, Lord God, because it's your breath that we breathe. It's your life that we live. Our prayer right now, Lord God, is that we would endeavor for our lives to be in alignment with yours. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it already is in heaven. Father, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Father, please lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all which is sin and evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. How's everybody doing tonight, man? How are we doing? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I definitely honor the Lord in this moment. I thank God for his goodness, for his grace, for just keeping us, allowing us to go through valleys, allow us to go through over hills, through storms, and for us to yet still make it here once again. Hallelujah. Y'all, if you, if you haven't already, man, please make sure you hug Sister Sadrea. Y'all, Sadrea, our daughter, our family's in the house tonight, man. Woo, 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 woo. We really miss you, Sadrea, for real. It's so good to have you with us tonight, y'all. Oh, praise the Lord. And y'all, we got three in the house with us again tonight, y'all. Praise the Lord is 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 such a good thing to know that we can come together in fellowship for real. Um, to the elders, to the ministers, man, to those of y'all who are really helping, and all the leaders that actually help make this possible. Because I can't. There's no one person that can do everything that the Lord expects us to do, and we definitely can do more together. So I, I definitely praise the Lord for every one of you all who are here with us. So to the elders, to the ministers, to the leaders, to every one of you sons and daughters, man. You are kings and queens. Every one of you occupy various positions of royalty. Every one of us, praise the Lord. And it's, it's a blessing and it's a delight for us to be here together. Praise the Lord. Y'all may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. It is truly an honor to be here with every one of you. Um, I don't believe that it's a whole lot. That um, I believe that it's a message. It's something to talk about tonight that I believe that continues to bring us right back to the basics. And um, and even for uh, his word Wednesdays tonight, man, to hear all of the stuff that every one of you said, man. And it's the Bosco. And it's the Sam. Elder Wamba. Brother Trey, y'all. I'm, I'm Y'all, I try not to sound redundant, y'all, but we really are a loaded weapon. And we're growing and we're being strengthened to where it would never be surrounded around one personality or one person. Everybody say we loaded right now. We loaded. Real talk, real talk. Y'all, if, if you have your Bibles, man, let's get into this just a little bit on tonight. If you have your word, why don't you go to 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. 1 
1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. We live in a day and time, man, where people can be so captivated and so amazed, so bewildered by just the chance of receiving a title or a position. We're so driven by fame and fortune and money. And I love how the Apostle Paul deals with this position as an apostle, not as a position of being prestigious, of being up so everybody can look and say, you're an apostle, ah, oh, but he deals with the fact of, he understands that he has an assignment that he's supposed to serve more than anything. And I believe that quickly the importance of servitude in the house of God has got to continue to be increased. The importance of recognizing what does it mean to be a minister? What does it mean to be a servant? What does it mean to lead? What does that even look like? It's simply amazing to know and to believe that God, that the Father can actually mark me and change me by using anyone and every single one of you in here. Y'all, let's just think about that. If, if you can look back over your life and say that you know God in a way now that you did not know two years ago or that you did not know four years ago or six years ago. Whenever you think about where or how the journey began, most times it began by, somebody, by God using or sending someone specifically and it may have looked like you just got a job and became cool. It may look like y'all just was at a particular event at the same time. It might look like y'all ran into each other at the store or y'all see each other at the gym every time. And then when you begin to backtrack, you begin to realize that it was all a part of a greater plan. And God literally chose somebody to mark you. The scripture says in the book of Ezekiel, the scripture says that there was a man that had an ink horn and there were messengers that were sent out to destroy. And the word was given to them, to him to say, do not destroy anyone upon whom they have the mark. Those whom the Lord himself is marked. I believe every one of us in here have been marked by God. I know we've gone through various trials. I know some of us feel like we're still going through things that we can't control. But I'm persuaded that all of us are marked to some degree. Amen. And we're coming to a place where we understand it even more so that this mark is for the purpose of God. It really is. Every one of us, each one of us, have to come to a place where we're supposed to realize that we got to each one must reach at least one. Each one must teach at least one. If you feel like there is anything that you know about the Lord, anything. And if you have not set it out within yourself to share that which you have. It's as if you hate anybody that you would choose not to give them that pertinent information that perhaps the Lord has used to change or to transform your life. We're going to come across people, y'all, that have so many different gifts, so many different talents. 
And if you're not sharing what you know, could it be that you have allowed yourself to be reduced to being impressed by somebody just because they got money, just because they're in a relationship, just because they got a job or a position or a title to you? Did you allow yourself to be impressed? Don't you know that we just read a scripture that says that riches will sprout wings and fly away from you, from us? Am I the only one that have lost things that I've had, that I've trusted in? Yo, let us not, let's not allow our focus and our mindset to be captivated by something that is not promised to remain. But we're receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. It cannot be moved. We used to hear this all the time. That only what you do for Christ will last. What does that mean? It means that there's so many different things that we try to receive. And we try to make all kind of accolades. Because we want to look like we're important. We, you know, I want to be important. Don't you want to feel important? Don't you want to feel like you matter? All these different things. But what happens if you put all of your faith in something that doesn't matter? What happens if you put your faith in someone who doesn't matter? Not to the degree that they should. Yo, we have to endeavor to know that our purpose is to evangelize. Our purpose is to take that which the Lord has given unto us and give that out. Believe it or not, everybody in life is attempting to proselytize. Everybody is trying to take their own influence and cause you to be influenced by it. We, we, we all have heard that you take trash to a trash can. You, got, you can't just be so quick to receive what people are giving to you. Because they're still in a process of evangelizing, believe it or not. It's a process of trying to make you conform. To try to make you take on the appetite of something that you didn't. Is there anybody in here that at one point you didn't have an appetite for something and then you realize that after a span of time you start having this, this, this desire for something that you know is not right but all of a sudden you got this uncanny desire to long for it and you know it was not something that you was born with. How did you get it? You better believe somebody was on assignment whether or not it was through social media whether or not it was through a friend you better believe that every time we do anything there is there are fishers and hunters that are taking place all around us everybody coming out the closet I think it's time to manifest the kingdom Amen. I think it's man I, I believe it's time to manifest the glory of God Every institution that God ordains is not supposed to be under a bed or under a bushel. It's supposed to be in a place in the house that causes the whole house to light up. Praise the Lord. It's simply amazing to know that that the Father can mark me using you. That's amazing that the handiwork of God can take place just by you coming to me saying, good morning, how you doing? Because y'all, let me remind y'all, believe it or not, five people can say good morning and it have a different impact with each person because we have a different spirit. You can literally speak to somebody or shake somebody's hand and literally change the atmosphere and that person don't realize that their world started getting a little better after you spoke to them. Because everything that we do is bringing about some level of impartation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians the ninth chapter. Let's go to verse number 24. 
1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. Even though we're going to verse 24, this whole chapter talks about the Apostle Paul acknowledging and, and revealing the fact of what does it mean for him to walk in his apostleship. 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, drop down to verse number 24. Verse number 24 says, Know ye not that they which run in a race, they all run, but only one receives a prize. Now he just said only one receives a prize. And I'm like, if it's 20 of us, and only one of us gonna win, we go to sizing each other up, but that brother looked like he could run. That person looked like this, that person looked like this. Man, look at Wamba, man. Wamba, that boy could run. Look at Sam, man. You know, somebody like me, you know, I'd be like, man, they gonna probably win. Why should I run? <laughs> I would have appreciated it better if he said, all of you can win. But he said, one is going to receive the prize. Every one of us got a race. And he says, you got to run. Run like you want to win. Run like nobody else is running. Run like it's your mindset that you got to cross the finish line. How many times you just saw Olympics or saw those commercials where they show somebody who fell down and the race is over and somebody get picked up because they still had it in their heart to finish. It's as if each one of us Got to have a personal prize within us. That says it goes beyond a trophy that everybody else get. It comes to a place that you realize you're competing against you. That you prove it to you that you can be better. You prove it to you that you can change. You prove it to you that you can change the outcome of what you used to allow to enter in. Because the things that defile a man is not what you put in, but it's what comes out. So what have you been feeding yourself? You say each one of us got to run that we may obtain the prize. But listen to this boy, verse number 25. Verse 25 says, and every man that strives for mastery is temperate in all things. That means that you can't just focus on one thing without dealing with everything that's involved. You can't just say you're going to work out your arms and forget about your back. <laughs> or forget about your legs. Everybody wants the glory, but nobody wants to look like Tweety Bird. Nobody. <laughs> He says, you got to be temperate in all things. But look what he says. They do it to obtain a corruptible crown. Something that perishes. He says, but we, an incorruptible crown, something that we're going to receive, is not something that's going to perish, Bree. Don't ever allow the enemy or even your own mind to make you believe that it's a waste of time. Yo, we got to constantly get back in this word. We got to constantly surround ourselves with people who are about that life, who are about the gospel. Real talk. Fiston, I'm proud of you, man. I'm proud of you, bro. Amen. Real talk. So guess what, y'all? Verse number 26 says, okay, so if I'm around people like this and 
I realize I want something that's incorruptible. Paul says, I therefore so run. Everybody say that part. Everybody say, I therefore so run. I therefore so run. It's my, everybody say, it's my turn. My turn. It's my turn to run. He says, not as uncertainly. He said, so fight I. Not as one that beats the air. Y'all, y'all, we was looking at how Tyson and Jake Paul was supposed to fight. You know, how they fought and... Everybody looking at stuff like, oh, we know it was fixed, and they're showing all these reels. How they show Tyson showing how fast he's punching, and, and y'all pay attention to how they be fighting in the air. It's the shadow boxing. But Paul said, hundreds of years ago, he said, we can't just swing against the air. We got to hit something every time. Every time. He says, I don't fight like I'm somebody that's beating against the air. Verse 27, but I keep under my body and bring it under subjection. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Elder G, won't you get that for me? Read that amplified for me, that verse number 27. Hallelujah. But like a boxer, a buffet my I buffet my body, handle it roughly, discipline it by hardship, and subdue it for fear that after proclaiming to others the gospel and things pertaining to it, I myself should become unfit not stand the test, be unapproved and rejected as a counterfeit. Oh my God. Y'all listen to this easy English translation. Easy English says, I rule my own body strongly and I make it my slave. That's kind of, kind of crazy to think that you got to make your own body your slave. Do we really feel and believe that sometimes our body want to do something that we know is not right? <laughs> do we believe that our body can be just like a big dog on a chain that be trying to pull you down the street? Only it's not a dog that's pulling you. It's you. Various desires that we have. And when he says, I rule my body, it's like you got to learn how to do well. Learn how to stay in the race. Learn how not to get out of bounds. Learn to govern your body. He says, I have taught other people about how to run this race. And I myself also want to win. Because the reward is from God. He says, I do not want God to say to me, you yourself do not do the things that you teach. So I am removing you from the race. Man. Turn, we're going to come right back to 1 Corinthians 9. Let's go to Luke 7 real quick. Luke, the 7th chapter. Hallelujah. Luke, the 7th chapter. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Elder Muama, can you get that man? Get verse number 31. Luke 7 and verse number 31. Luke chapter 7 and verse number 31. To what then shall I compare the people of this generation who set aside God's plan and what are their like? Oh man, where unto? Then shall I liken the men of this generation. Y'all, when we look around, y'all, what, what are people like? 
Yo, let's just take a consensus right now. You know, like, you know, when we look at the majority of people that we live around, people that we cross in contact with, yo, just shout out some words. What are they like? What do we like? Jealous. Jealous? What else? Hatred. Huh? What'd you say? Hatred. 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 Bitter. What? Bitter. Selfish. Bitter. Bitter. What'd you say, Elijah? Money driven, unforgiven. Which is what you say, Lule? Prideful. Prideful. What 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 do we like, David? What do you see? Worldly behavior. Worldly behavior. Audrey, what do we see? Low self esteem. Look, man, Taz, what do we see? Lost. Lost and okay with it. So now what do we see? Anger. Prideful, lustful. Greedy. Overcompensated, undercompensated. Lazy. Scared, fearful. Intimidated, looking to intimidate. Spineless. Spineless. He said, look, the scripture says, the Lord said, whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation? And to what are they like? Look what it says right here in verse number 32. Go ahead, Elder Wamble. Verse 32. Verse 32, there are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another and saying, we played the flute for you, pretending to be at a wedding, and you did not dance. Mm. We sang a dirge, or pretending to be at a funeral, and you did not weep, so nothing we did appealed to you. Who have a different translation? Verse number 32, who got a different translation? What you got, Brother Trey? Go ahead. They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace and calling one to another and saying, We have piped unto you, and you have not danced. We have mourned to you, and ye have not wept. The easy English says, They are like children who are sitting in the marketplace. They are playing. They shout out to other children. We made happy music on a pipe for you. Why are you not dancing? We sang a sad song. Why are you not crying? Verse number 33, watch this y'all. Verse 33 says, For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine. And they said, John has a devil. All of this, y'all, all for the sake of trying to endeavor to change people's lives. And they said, John has a devil. Verse number 34. Minister Bosco, read verse 34. Verse 34 says, the son of man is come eating and drinking. And you say, behold, a gluttonous man and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. He says the son of man. So he's talking about what John did. John didn't eat or drink. And they say he has a devil. Amen. Son of man came eating and drinking. What do y'all see here? I see evangelism on whole different levels, different spectrums. Notice there was no negative connotation given to John because of the, the, the sphere that he was assigned to. But Yeshua himself came on a different level. Y'all, can we be okay with knowing where we are sent? He said, the son of man came eating and drinking and you say, he's, he's full of gluttony. 
Christ must have been eating at everybody's house. <laughs> and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. He said, but at the end of the day, verse 35, look what it says. Regardless of what type of judgment call you make, wisdom is going to be justified by the fruit that's produced. Yo, what are we producing? Yo, everybody say we endeavor to evangelize. We endeavor to evangelize. Say wisdom is justified. Wisdom is justified. Of all her children. Praise the Lord. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 9. It's all about evangelism, y'all, on so many different levels. 1 Corinthians 9. And this time we're going to go up to verse number uh, 17. 1 Corinthians 9. Matter of fact, verse 16. 1 Corinthians 9 and 16. Brother Trey, why don't you go get the mic and read that for me. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Man, I, I like how Paul says, I have nothing to glory of. Even though I'm preaching, like there is nothing that I could just say is just guaranteed to me as if I just got it all together. Yo, this is a personal walk. This is a personal race that all of us have to run. He says, for necessity is laid on me. Woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Look at verse number 17. For if I do this willingly, like if I'm good with it, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. He's basically saying that I can either do this from a standpoint that I have the liberty and the freedom to do it because I know this is what, this is what pleases God. Or I could do it in such a legalistic, self-righteous way and I could feel like I'm forced to do it because I want to appear to be right in front of all of you. He says, verse 18, but what is my reward then? Verily that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge. That I abuse not my power in the gospel. Verse 19, for though I be free from all men, I made myself a servant to all that I might gain the more. What is that like to see people and to get to a place where you can make the bad mistake of treating people differently because of how they dress? Are treating people differently because of what position they have or what kind of title they have are you looking at things based on the outward appearance the scripture says Jesus said be careful that you don't treat somebody that come into your place of worship or wherever you are and because they dress nice you say oh come close because the nicer you look the nicer is going to make me look Come sit real close. But then somebody else come that may look like they just don't have it together. And you say, go back there in that corner. God. Paul is saying, wait a minute. We got to be so very careful because based on the scripture, when the scripture says in Hebrews 13 and 1, let brotherly love continue. But then verse number two says, be careful when you entertain strangers because some have been entertained by angels unaware. So you mean to tell me that somebody can come in our midst and they're on assignment to look like they're not about nothing? Jesus said, blessed are you because when you saw me, you, you fed me. When you saw me, 
you gave me something to drink. When I was cold, you clothed me. They said, Lord, you hear that? That's when you start thinking different. Like, whoa, I was, all, and y'all trust me, all of us have made bad judgment calls. All of us have looked at people and said, Oh, look at the type of car this person drive. They must be something special. But the scripture says that Satan can transform himself to appear as an angel of light, deceiving the very elect. And no wonder that his, his, his ministers can also transform themselves to appear as ministers of righteousness. So what's, what's governing our actions? Say, so what is my reward then? Verily, when I preach the gospel, I make the gospel of Christ without charge that I abuse not my power in the gospel. For though I be free from all men, yet I have made myself a servant unto all that I might gain the more. Verse number 20. And unto the Jews, I became as a Jew that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law that I might gain them that are under the law. Y'all, let me tell y'all something. This, this is probably one of the most powerful scriptures that I believe that the apostle Paul has penned. Because he begins to, he begins to deal with the fact that he literally, I mean literally, has the mindset that, that my playing field, the field that I play on, encompasses any and every place I could ever go. Anywhere. And he literally says that I take this walk so serious that my job is not to come off on the offset as if I'm trying to impress you by the word that I got and by the revelation that I have and telling you how much I pray and telling you how many scriptures I know. Paul said the first thing I want to do is make you know I feel exactly where you at. I know what it feels like to be where you are. But that, that hits different right there. Because before I try to make you believe that you so dirty, Paul said, I'm going to let you know just how dirty I was. Paul says to the Jews, I became just like them. That, that, that's Paul is like, I was like a lizard. I change colors, but not changing my essence. Paul said, oh yeah, I can relate to you. Yo, how multifaceted was this man? Look, yo, it don't stop right here. He said to the Jews, I became as a Jew. Elijah, how you think he might have changed the way he was talking when he was around these people? How can you blend in with people yet without being compromised. Is there a way to talk to people who use all kind of profanity, you could talk to them without profanity, and yet they still look at you like they still believe you can relate to everything they say. I'm talking about the gift of God. Because remember, John ain't messed with nobody. Jesus was everywhere. And guess what? They, they treated both of them like they had devils. Are you able to endure being treated as if you got a devil or something? This can't be a joke to us, y'all. We really see, but we really got to be ready for this. We got to be ready to call a meeting and say, y'all, we need a meeting this Saturday. I know such and such, and such whatever. We need, why, why we need to get together, y'all? Because I'm being, I'm being, I'm being, I'm being overtaken. I got so much stuff going on, I need to be encouraged. Y'all believe it or not, that would be good to every now and then have us coming together for the purpose of re-strategizing and understanding. Wait a minute. Can, can, yo, we can't feel bad if I call you, David, and say, say, Dave, bro, I know how you see me. I know how you think I see myself. But right now, I don't feel like that. Can you tell me who I am again? Can you remind me what does the word say about me? They all know that this is something real. Amen. If, if you have not been there yet, trust me, the time is coming. You're going to get tired of trying to put on this image as if you're so strong all the time. 
And you're going to start realizing who do you really surround yourself around. Can somebody truly love you? That's why when Brother Trey was talking about how important it was listening to Minister Bosco about how important it is to have genuine relationships. That you can be transparent and still know that you have not lost your value. You still strong in the Lord. Still has the gift and the power to declare that you are who you are. But every now and then, boy, we go through some stuff. It's just like waking up in the morning after you worked out. When your pain hurt and your muscles hurt, don't mean that you failed. I mean, that's the areas that was impacted. He said to the Jews, I became as a Jew. Why? Was it that serious? To them that were under the law, I became as one under the law that I might gain them that are under the law. They got some people, y'all, that have been clicked up in all kind of games and God has changed their mindset, changed their life. What a loss. If you get to a point where you try to live as if you never did that before. That's part of your testimony. Talk about the goodness of God. Let them see the mercy of God. Because they got so many people thinking that they're beyond God's grace and mercy. Like, y'all ever, ever got to a place where you messed up so many times and you just felt like, man, it don't even make no sense to get in the race. Get, a, get on the line, the line up for what? I remember five times ago I said I was going to stop and couldn't. And all of a sudden somebody else showed up and said, man, his grace was sufficient for me. I remember it was, I was 30 times past. But guess what? Wisdom is justified by her children. I'm learning. I've learned that whatsoever state I'm in, therewith to be content. I realize now that I can't just trust somebody because of what they look like or because of how smooth their words is, Kelsey. Kelsey, I understand that no matter what they're driving, David, I understand it doesn't matter what their degree is. It don't matter what degree I don't have. My inability of not having a degree will not ever limit what God says he's going to do in me. God said that's making room for me to demonstrate my glory. I've heard so many people. One of my best friends right now is a millionaire. Just told me yesterday that on a million dollar house, he only owed $14,000 on it because he's able to pay in excess so much. Y'all, guess what? No degree. Don't you ever allow some statistic in this world to limit your belief on what God can do with you. You might be the next anomaly. Something special about you. Don't you ever think about giving up. Get your mind right. It says to them that are under the law, I became as one under the law that I might gain them that are under the law. That's like somebody on CIA level. Like they understand what's my assignment today. Today you're going to be a doctor. Got it. What's your assignment today? Or you're just going to be a postal worker. And guess what? Your job, you've been on this job long enough to where you know. I'm pretty sure when you first start off, you wonder, you know, is the soup, are, are they going to know to let me in as if I'm one of them when they know I'm really not? Do they know? But after you've done it so many times, what's the assignment? Next thing you know, you already know you got to walk in and blend in. Boy, how many enemies we have around us that they blended right in? And they know what their assignment is. The question is, do we know who we are? Amen. Paul said, he knows. Look what he says. After he deals with the one under the law, look verse 21. To them that are without the law. He says, I can become as one without the law. But look what he says, being not without the law toward God. 
but under the law to Christ that I might gain those who are without the law. You got to be careful, y'all. And, and this is not to judge one or the other because we just got through talking about John and Christ. They knew where they were called. Verse 22. To the weak, I became this one that was weak. That means that I'm all right with being able to share, man. I can be transparent and say, man, I know that struggle. Man, I just thought about that yesterday. Man, I wish I had that. Man, it'd be so nice to have that. And on the inside, it's like a, a lion roaring, being held back. Because you know you're under control. You know you're not weak. But I'm not acting like I'm weak to try to display my flesh. I got, I got my next mission in front of me. And it's important that you know that I know where you are. He says, so to the one that's weak, I became as one that was weak, that I might gain the one who's weak. I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some of them. Verse 23, and this I do for the sake of the gospel. Hallelujah. Y'all, let's stand up right here. Let's, let's stand up. Let's stand up. Let's stand up. Let's stand up. Hallelujah. I'm not done just yet, y'all. I just feel like we need to stand up right here. See, I do all this for the sake of the gospel. I want y'all to look around and I want y'all to think about it. The armies are still gathering, y'all. The armies are still gathering. Whether or not it's new age, whether or not it's alternative lifestyles, regardless of what mountains they own, they're still gathering. But I want y'all to know for the sake of the gospel, we not lost. We know who we are. Amen. See, I do this for the gospel's sake, that I might be a partaker thereof with you. Then we get to verse 24. Know ye not that everybody that run in a race, they all run, but all, but only one receives the prize. So run that you might be able to obtain it. Let me tell y'all something. Each one must reach at least one. Each one must teach at least one. People tag buildings, y'all. They tag buildings. They tag bridges. Y'all never thought about it when you go through certain cities. I know they did it in New Orleans. I definitely know Chicago. Y'all, they go through certain cities and you'll see bridges that's high. How can somebody get up there and tag a bridge? They, they can't put a ladder. They got traffic going on. That means that they got people that literally strategize being camouflaged to put a mark to show that they were there. They tag trains. Y'all, this stuff is illegal. How then can they still get it to happen? They feel like they're on a mission. People tag their own bodies. They tag trees. Cars. Clothes, yo, we, even when we get into brand names and all that, that's tagging. We attempt to reveal the spans of our reach. It's not good enough just for me to have it, but I want you to have it too. I want you to be marked. And if this could happen on a worldview, how much more? Because the Lord says, you think I'm going to let mine go unmarked? Every one of us, y'all, we've been marked. Amen. And we got to fight not to allow the residue of the world to begin to influence us the same or if not even more than before. That's not who you are anymore. Come from among them. Be separate.
separate. Be separate. So Father, we just thank you right now, Lord God, for this night. We thank you for this time. Father, help us to be reminded right now, Lord God, that that there is a force in this world that is making every attempt to mark us. And the attempts to mark us is also to market us. Well, Father, we're not for sale. Because your word says, what does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his very essence? So, Father, right now, Lord God, we just ask right now for your forgiveness right now, Father. We ask right now, Lord God, that you help us to recall and to remember, Lord God, our purpose in you. Father, everything that was lost, we claim restoration right now. Everybody just lift up your hands right now, y'all. Not for an individual call for prayer, but I believe every one of us need this. I pray right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that we would be restored of everything that was lost, our innocence that was lost. We release all rebellion right now, Lord God. We release anger and our desire to be accepted by so many. Father, we pray right now, Lord God, that you will continue to cultivate our minds, Lord God, that we would not be conformed to this world, but that we would be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Father, we remember that your word says that righteous lot was being vexed by filthy conversations. Father, give us the boldness to shut down filthy conversations. Help us, Lord God, not to initiate filthy conversations. Help us, Lord God, to remember that though many of us have the same call to the weak and to the under the law and without the law, but Father, help us to be reminded without compromising. So, Father, we honor you right now, Lord God. And thank you for reminding us, Lord God, that we must beat our body under subjection. That after we have run, we don't ever want you, Lord God, to look at us and say, you don't even belong in this race. So, Father, we thank you right now. Everybody just take a moment right now, y'all, because the scripture says that if we go before him and we confess our sins, the scripture says he is faithful and just to cleanse us and to forgive us. Father, we receive forgiveness right now, Lord God. Right now, Lord God. We will not be castaways, Lord God. We will not be disqualified. I will not be disqualified. I will not be disqualified. I will not take your grace for granted. I will control the airways in my mind. I will control my thought life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So we bless you now, Lord God, and we honor you. In Jesus' name. Y'all give God a hand clap. Praise him.